Hey everyone, it's Amador, and I wanted to show you the little Christmas planner that I make every year for Nathan's mom. Um, and this is a digital printable from uh, shabbyartboutique.com, and it's designed by Carrie Ann English. Now, um, I think I showed it on like a year ago or whatever, but she does this every year, and it's a printable that she has on the Shabby Art Boutique uh, website. And this is the printable. Now, what I did, I'm going to tell you right now, I boo-booed it up. I, for some ungodly reason, instead of just printing the PDF, I copied it and then I pasted it into a Word document. And then I printed it from there. So the size is going to be different than the one you guys print. So don't do what I did. I think, okay, I'll tell you a secret. I did it because I did it at work and I probably wasn't supposed to do it at work, but whatever. Um, I printed this at work so I didn't use my ink at home. Um, <laughs> I was naughty. So this is the printable that you get, and it's super awesome. Now, you can do, this is actually made for, um, it's an A2 size so printable. And I'll show you guys right now on the website real quick. Let me just show you guys that on my laptop. So this is the um, the website. Now, if you guys are Tilda addicts like myself, um, that's, I believe that's uh, Shelly Ann. Um, no, Carrie Ann, I'm so sorry. Um, and this is an Australian website. Um, it's based in Australia, excuse me. This is also where I get my Tilda fix. They have magnificent pictures and they do projects and everything. It's super, super awesome. They have a shop. They have tutorials, all sorts of stuff. I've shown this before, but I absolutely love this website. It's very shabby, very beautiful. So this is, you click on here, and this is the Simply Christmas Ever um, Free Vintage Christmas Planner. Now she has this every year and it's updated with calendar-wise and everything. So let me show you guys. As you can see, look, they have like amazing Tilda stuff on here. So this is the printable and it comes up like that. And all you have to do is just click, um, and of course, subscribe to their blog. It's freaking amazing. But look, you can see all of the Tilda-inspired stuff. So many things. They have, um, you just click right there for the printable. Let me just click on that to show you. And this is how it comes up. Now, this is the printable. Like I said, I made a boo-boo, and I copied and pasted it into a Word document. Don't do that. Just print it. <laughs> just print it up. Um, so let me see, and I'll show you guys. Da -da -da. They have tutorials. They have a lot of free um, printables. Look at those beautiful things. Very shabby. If you guys love Shabby Chic, if you guys love Tilda, this is the website to go. Seriously. Absolutely love it. All of these tutorials. Isn't that cute? And if you go to the shop, it has different things you can shop. They also have this Green Gate um, stuff. I've actually seen some of this stuff on Marilyn G's uh, YouTube. She loves that stuff too. Um, let's see here. If you go to shop, let me go. We're going to visit the, go to the shop. And this has so many things. And you go over here and it has the tilde. Look, they're having a sale. Get it. Um, let's see. Go to patterns. And these are the different patterns and stuff that they sell. It's super, super cute. I absolutely love it. Simply Shabbylicious. And this is, these are digital magazines that they have. Let me see. And they have a Christmas one every year. It's super, super awesome. And you guys can print them online or you can, um, let's see, look. This was the last year's planner. Um, they have one um, every year. It's super, super, super awesome. And they have magnificent shabby Christmas stuff. So let me put that aside. Okay. So, like I said, this is the planner, and it has all of the information. It says, uh, no part of this publication shall be reproduced, transmitted, or resold in whole or in part. So, you know, don't use these. Don't resell these. That's why I only make them for um, my friends and family. And um, I printed, like I said, I made a boo-boo. So, I ended up cutting it down and printing it. I mean, uh, cutting it out. Now, the image I have is, and I will have, by the way, at the end of this, I will have... A quick tutorial. It's a voiceover sped up tutorial on how I cut everything up. Since I booted it up, I ended up cutting the actual image at five. Uh, of course, I just forgot and I just did it. Um, I need a new ruler. At five by um, six and seven eighths for the image, the actual um, image. And then the cardstock I cut at um, five and a quarter by seven and an eighth that way i have a one eighth border around every one of my images now where i did have a boo because the way i printed it the calendars come in the two page setup and i cut it down the middle 
and I was a little off on one side because of how I cut it, but it still works out. Obviously, you can see that's one, two, three, you know, the dates, and it still has the um, the space for you to put. Now, it has uh, December events, gift list. I absolutely love this. Um, internet shopping, because, I mean, this may be a vintage planner, but let's, you know, we live in this century. Um, email list, card list, because you want to have all of that. Um, grocery list, and I love how it has the grocery list and the menu, so you can have it all on one one side. Shopping list, shopping list. Um, so it has all of that, and I bound it with my um, with my bind it all. I actually like the bind it all more than the cinch because it's smaller, it's more compact, and I feel that I get rounder rings. If that makes sense, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that is the planner. Like I said, it's super, super awesome. Love Shabby Art Boutique. You guys check out their blog, subscribe to the blog. They're super amazing. And stay tuned if you want to see the little tutorial on how I put this puppy together. Oh, and this, um, cardstock, I believe it's Recollections cardstock. And this is like a cranberry or it's something, but it's like, um, I didn't have like the vintage darker red. And I felt that this would go really well with the vintage look of it and give it more of a style. And I think that's the same one I used last year um, or the year before that. But like I said, this is super, super awesome. Check out the printable. I have a few more prints so I can um, make a four for a couple of friends and stuff. But this one is super, super awesome. It makes a beautiful gift. You can tie some ribbons. You can decorate all you want. I made it this size because this way his mom can just stick it in her purse and go about it, you know get her information pull it out when she uses it she actually keeps these every year she's so sweet so um so yeah but stay tuned for the little tutorial if you guys want to see how i did it and thank you guys for stopping by so let's go to the tutorial so this is about where i figured out that um what the way i printed the pages and you see i, I kind of moved them around the way i printed the pages was not really working out because I was like, oh yeah, I copied them onto a Word document and then I printed them. So anyway, so don't do what I did. But what I ended up kind of solving my little issue was that I ended up cutting the f uh, the page fronts from five by six and seven eighths. And um, I was, and it was just going just fine. I'm like, okay, you know, I'll just do five by six and seven eighths and, you know, and then just make the, um, the mats a quarter inch bigger. And then I'm like trying to figure out what I'm doing here because this is the calendar and this is where I have to cut it down the middle and it's designed for you to cut it down the middle and then I'm like okay what am I going to do but I decided I'm like you know what I'm just going to go for it and I'm going to cut it down the middle <laughs> and hopefully it lands really close to very very close to the actual in between of the dates but it worked out some of them were like a hair off to the side and some of them were not and most of these have the little um a little line kind of a little faded vintage line going down the middle where you're going to cut them but I figured hey and then I was like you know what they were all in the same uh, same print so in the same format I can actually cut several I think I did three at a time where I cut off the edges but I was still trying to make sure that they measure the five by six and seven eighths and then I just cut them down the middle well I was actually measuring um, since 5 by 5 it was 10 it was 10 by 6 and 7 eighths the way I did it but like I said don't do what I did okay seriously you're gonna mess it <laughs> you're gonna make it more difficult just go ahead and put, uh, print it the way it is on the PDF form on the website and you'll have a much easier time and the funny thing is I didn't even realize about this until I got home and like I said I was naughty and I printed this at work and I think that's why I did it on a um, put it on a work document so I could be you know because most offices have Microsoft and stuff, so it would have been easier for me to print it. Not that I was supposed to because I was at work, but hey, you know what? They don't need to know that now, do they? So I actually went ahead and I cut all of them, and I went ahead and I did this. I left the entire video of me cutting them up because that way you can kind of see what I ended up boo-booing and how it ended up working. And since this was just regular printer paper, I was able to cut three or four at a time. It was much easier. I don't like to do this with the cardstock because it'll it'll shift a little bit, even though you have that little plastic thing on my cutter. And this is a guillotine, and this is by um, Tonic Studios that I use to cut this. I got this one from Stampin' Up! a long time ago. I've never replaced the blade, and I've, had, blade, and I've had it for like about five years, I think. But I do want to get another one because I feel that I'm going to break this one any day now, and I want a new one. But they do have them on Amazon, so but they, they have them in that ugly orange color that Tonic has most of their stuff, unless it's a brand that they did through an outside company or whatever. So this is me. I'm just still trying to finish cutting them up, and um, 
place in the mount and since the, even if I don't cut it directly on that little line I can uh, still make it work because it has those vintage lines going through it but it all worked out and I do like that my cutter has that lever on the side so here I am actually arranging the pages because I'm going to cut cardstock to go in between the the images in between the pages and I'm just positioning them to make sure that they face correctly when you open the book and that I just boo-booed it up again stuff went just flying everywhere I think I sneezed or I picked it up wrong I don't know but I wanted to make sure that the calendars were facing each other and you can add the images you can duplicate images if you want more pages of you know the emails or whatever or the card list it'll it'll work out so in here I was doing the back and front to make sure it actually fit correctly. Now in the printable it does have the information on the front sheet, but I went ahead and I, this information sheet and I put it on the back sheet in case she shares it with anyone or anybody asks, oh where can I get the printable? Boom, there it is, it's in the back. So now I'm using this kind of mulberry, cranberry, and it's not cranberry, it's going to be like more like mulberry colored cardstock to um, cut up the pages. And like I said, I just made them a quarter inch bigger than the front page images so that way it has a beautiful one eighth one eighth inch border on um as you can see right here on the on the full pages when they're completely done and i went ahead and i cut them all i didn't record the entire video of me uh, cutting every single one just a few of them just so you can kind of see the gist of it because it's the same one i didn't have to i didn't have to over complicate it myself for myself like i normally do as the printed pages and now we're going to be going into where I have the pages I have um, and I'm going to adhere them to the pages and to make sure that I have the correct order that I already organized. And I'm just using my ATG gun because it's just easier and they're all straight lines I, um, on that um, that I'm gluing on the pages. There's no curves, there's no anything. And I just use my um, Teflon bone folder to make sure I smooth everything out and it um, adheres. And I do adhere, put adhesive on the borders and then one throughout the middle to it kind of hold, so it holds in the center part of the page because it's a pretty big page of just, you know, freestanding kind of thing. And it's since it's printer paper, it tends to like um, like move when you move the pages. I don't know, it's weird. But it's not like cardstock that'll stay. And here I am, I'm just going to go ahead and adhere several of the pages. I don't do all of them. I just show you guys a few of them so you can see. You don't want to hear me babble on. But um, here is, and I just make sure that they go in the correct order and to make sure that the calendars um, are facing each other because the calendars are cut in half. The November and December calendars are cut in half. And that way they face each other and you can see them when you open the book and um, put it all together. But in like I said, I'm just make sure to smooth everything out with my bone folder and see they do meet up perfectly. I didn't boo boo it that badly, but I do go page by page. So here I'm using my bind it all, my little trusty bind it all, which I had to dust off because I hadn't used it in forever. So I measure the rings, and this uh, this is the three fourth eight three fourths inch rings, and I just cut enough. I see which ones I can use, how much I need for it, and I need um. I used 12 rings and this was just a little a practice card stock that I made and I wanted to see how it would um, where I was going to go so I'm basically the bind it all punches and presses to um, six six punches or six rings however you want to think about it at a time so what I do is I just lay over and there you see my big fat head <laughs> I just lay over the ring so I can mark where they're going to go because they're going to go in two sections as you can see the little marked sections of six and you get this little um, palette of thing, uh, little plastic things that you can measure up in case you lost the box of the rings. You measure it up to the little print on it and then you make sure that you open your gate here to fit it. And you see, you, you just move it back and forth to fit the actual, um, the actual rings and the actual correct size rings. And then once again, my big fat head, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Um, so here I am, I'm practicing it again on this practice sheet and I cut it to the same size and there I did make my little tick marks for the six rings and I just bring it in, I slide it down where it has those three, uh, those six ring marks and then I just slide it over and I keep it so that way it, um, and see, and then I test it so it's good to go. You don't want to test it on your already completed pages, but I wanted to test it on a, a practice sheet of paper. So. Here we go, and I just do, and since it's pretty strong, the punch is pretty strong, um, 
I do three or four sheets at a time sometimes, but if you think about it, it's three or four sheets of cardstock plus three, plus twice as that of the copy paper. So, and this is kind of hard to do sometimes. It does have a little lever on the side that you can hold it to, I mean, you can use it to tell you where the pages will stay, but I like to just put them in there, go in there freestyle. Of course, you're gonna erase your tick marks. And I move the, le the lever close to the paper so it holds it and then I punch it through because it's pretty I mean it'll go through a lot of paper so these are the ones that I have to still to do I already did the first set I take the main page and then I mark instead of doing little tick marks I mark where the um, the punches are going to go and that way you have the exact same punches on all of your on all of your pages I don't do the pencil tick marks from the um, from the rings like I did for the first page I always you stencil basically the main page onto the other ones and that way you get the perfect setting for all of them they will match the main the first pages that you actually punched out and here i am just measuring it out see and see how i hold i pull the lever just a little bit for it to hold on to the pages and then i press it down all of the way to make sure it goes all of the way down and see here are the little um the little tick marks that i showed you not the tick marks the little um marks where I marked within the actual cut holes of the first page onto the rest of them so that way you get perfect cuts you don't have to erase anything because that'll be punched out and also if you do use your binder doll make sure you uh, clean it out um, the base <laughs> clean out the base um, every once in a while see here I check it again they go in there smoothly and they are good to go now the pages are already punched in and whatnot I'm just moving stuff out of the way so what you have to do is you take your back page you flip it around to cover the front page and this is how you do it this way the ends of the rings are within the last page then you loop it through and this is where you're going to go ahead and press it down and like I said it presses the six rings that it um, that it punches out the little um the press actually brings it um, brings it together so you do six now over here, I didn't notice that my rings weren't completely flat, so I went ahead and I moved them again to make sure that they are flat, um, the tips are flat on the board, on the bottom, and see, there you go, um, it is ready, and you just flip your page, your back cover back to where it goes, and you are ready to go. Now, I noticed that some of my rings weren't completely rounded off, so I went ahead and I pressed it again through it, but look, see, it all smooths, goes smoothly, and there you go. I got to use some toys that I haven't used, my little bind at all, and make this little um, little book um, for Nathan's mom. So thank you guys for watching and putting up with my voiceovers, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye, everyone.